Before the advent of the famous European explorers in Africa, there came the Arab and Portuguese slavers and brigands. But it is not these that catch the imagination. It is Burton, Speak, Stanley, Baker, and of course Livingstone. These often eccentric explorers were driven to put up with disease, privation and danger for different reasons. Some wished to discover unknown places for king, empire or self-glory. Others simply for the sake of exploration. Still others were driven by a missionary zeal. Livingstone probably embodied a little of each, but he was first and foremost a missionary. Certainly the rewards in many cases were great. Imagine being the first European to sight the mighty Victoria Falls. But the suffering was often much greater. Livingston died at Chupundu, where his faithful servants buried his viscera under a tree and then carried his salted body on an incredible journey to the east coast, where he was shipped to England and buried in Westminster Abbey. Chupundu and the Livingston Memorial lie just a few kilometers to the north of Kasanga. Kasanka, one of Zambia's smallest national parks, lies within the central province and just 70 kilometers to the north of the town of Serenji. Until recently, it's been one of the country's best kept secrets. Located on the southern fringe of the Lake Banguelu Basin and in the west, close to the border of the Democratic Republic of Congo, Kasanka lies in one of Africa's most interesting locations at the headwaters of the mighty Congo River. Despite its small size at just 420 kilometers, the park has a broad range of habitats. An important thread that ties them all together is the extensive systems of rivers and wetlands. The principal river, the Luwombwa, rises on Mount Mumpu in the Congo, makes a loop through the park and then back into the Congo where it joins the Luapula River. Five of the Luwombwa's tributaries also run through the park. The Mulembo, Kasanka, Musola, Mulaushi and the Kabumba. There are also a number of small water bodies or lakelets with such delightful sounding names as Wasawa Mukongolo and Chasamba Wa Mponde. Apart from the wetlands, there are five broad habitats or vegetation types. Miombo woodland, Chipia woodland, Riverine forest, including Mushitu. Dambos and hills. Of these, woodland and forest cover much of Kasanka. Miombo woodland, abundant across much of Zambia, is also dominant in the park. Depending on the depth of soil on which they grow, trees may range from just 5 metres in height to a respectable 20 metres. In the Miombo, two species of trees are usually dominant, the Mutondo, Jubinardia paniculata, and the Mutobo, Isobelinia angolensis. The 
Masuku woodland is a form of miombo that lies on areas cultivated before 1945, when the area was proclaimed as a game reserve. The large, leafed and yellow-fruited masuku, or Uopaca kirkiana, is dominant and an important source of food for many species, ranging from fruit bats to elephants. Chipia woodland has very few typical miombo trees and they tend to be taller, reaching up to 25 meters. Important timber trees now increasingly rare outside conservation areas, such as Mukwa or Pterocarpus angolensis, are present. The fruits of the aptly named sausage tree, Kaigelia africana, may reach one meter in length and up to 10 kilograms in weight. Of course, there are not only trees in the Miombo, but many undergrowth species. Fire is a regular and common feature of both woodland and grassland in Kasanka. In fact, fire is a major role player throughout Central Africa. To try and limit unplanned fires in the park, management staff burn large areas to prevent wildfires running out of control. Uncontrolled fires may result from the activities of poachers or are started by villagers outside Kasanka clearing land for cultivation. In general, these fires do little damage to the trees, as they are relatively fast traveling and cool. Unfortunately, hot fires can cause considerable damage where peat is present, especially in such habitats as swamp forest or mushitu. They often burn deep and long, causing even tall trees to crash to the forest floor. Along some of the river banks and in patches around the swamp, there are also linear forest patches of particular importance to one of Kasanka's greatest draw cards, the straw-colored fruit bats, is the Mushitu forest, especially the one at Fibwe on the edge of the Kapabi swamp. Here two species of trees dominate, the Musafwa or waterberry and the swamp fig, Ficus trichopoda. The existence of a large migratory colony of straw-coloured fruit bats first became known in 1986, but it was kept a closely guarded secret by David Lloyd. It was only in the year 2000 that the first visitors to the park were introduced to this bat aura of noise, smell and sight. These Eidolon helvum arrive in waves spread over several weeks from late October and into early November. From the middle of December to early January, they're starting to head northwards to the areas of Central Africa still unknown. It is only to this one small forest that they return each year when the rains have ensured a good crop of wild fruits. The Mashita forest in which they roost is dominated by two species of trees, 
large water berries and low swamp figs that form a dense canopy over the Musola River. Many of the waterberry trees are stripped almost bare of even their largest branches that snap under the tremendous weight of the clusters of bats. Only the tree trunks remain to dominate those parts of the forest favoured by the flying hordes. When large branches are in short supply, the bats completely encase the tree trunks in a living, mobile, constantly squabbling blanket. To watch the bats emerge from the forest immediately after sunset is a sight that, once seen, is never forgotten. It takes this vast hordes of millions of large bats almost half an hour to exit the forest. When heading for the feeding ground, many may travel up to and possibly beyond 40 kilometers. At the time the fruit bats arrive in Kasanka, many of the trees are fruiting. Favorites of the bats include the yellow apricot size musuku, the purple berries of the waterberry, as well as the fruits of several fig trees. The ground below and all around the fruiting trees is littered with the chewed fruit pulp skins and seeds. Despite the abundance of fruit, these bats do not have an easy life. Many die who are injured in branch falls. Predators prowl the forest floor and patrol the sky. Even the abundant crocodiles await an opportunity to snap up injured and low roosting bats. For the period of two months, fish eagles, marshall eagles and white bat vultures snack almost exclusively on these flying mammals. Although night flyers, disturbances during the day send thousands of bats into the air. Sometimes predators, sometimes baboons scare them up. At other times, it seemingly happens without obvious reason. At this stage, nobody knows why so many bats gather here. Certainly there's plenty of fruit. Mating activity is brisk. Some females carry newborn young. Many more are burdened by fetuses in different stages of development. The straw-coloured fruit bat occurs across the African tropics, but some individuals penetrate virtually everywhere to the south of the Sahara Desert. They have a wingspan that can reach 85 centimetres and with their dog-like faces are truly flying foxes. Of the five primate species living in the park, the most visible is the yellow race of the savannah baboon. They occur in all habitats but avoid the swamp area. Even when a troop is not visible, they are often heard barking and screaming. Whether it be a dominant male asserting his authority, warning of a predator or a youngster being punished for some misdemeanor. The blue monkey lives in small troops that are restricted to the riverine forest and is rather rare in Kasanka. Scattered between the woodland, there are open, short grass plains known locally as dambos. Although grass is the prominent feature, 
there are also scatterings of giant termite mounds crowned by miniature forests. Hippos emerge from the river and lake to graze the dambos and riverbanks at night, but during the day, this is the domain of the puku. The puku is an antelope that was hunted to near extinction in the park, but today it numbers well over 3,000. Kasanka has one of the densest surviving puku populations in Africa. Herd size is variable and constantly changing, with groups of females and their young moving freely over the territories of dominant rams. The lambs remain hidden amongst low grass for the early part of their life. When these dambos are flooded during the rains, the puku disperse into the surrounding woodlands. In Kasanka, puku have few enemies on the open dambos, but in the woodlands they are taken by leopards and run the gauntlet of crocodiles along the river banks. No one knows how many hippos populate the rivers and lakes of Kasanka. Here they are secretive and only rarely emerge to feed on the grassland floodplains during the daylight hours. Walk the roads and pathways in the early morning hours and you will find their distinctive four-toed tracks in mud or sand. Swamp areas dominated by papyrus and various other aquatic grasses are found in several areas of the park, the largest being the Kapabi Swamp. The Sitatunga, that shaggy-haired swamp dweller, is one of Africa's least known antelope. Yet, here in Kasanka, it is often and easily observed. Although claims are made for Botswana's Okavango Delta and the Saiwa Swamp in Kenya, it is here in Kasanka where you can best observe this long-hoofed swamp dweller. Sitting in the Fibwe tree hide, it is not unusual to have more than 30 Sitatunga within sight. During the daylight hours they favour the papyrus swamps, but at night they disperse into the woodland fringes. It is the most aquatic of all antelope and swims readily. The hoofs are exceptionally long and spread widely when walking on floating mats of vegetation and soft mud. Unlike many antelope species, they do not gather in close-knit herds, but form loose associations. Although newborn Sitatunga remain hidden for the first few weeks of life, one occasionally encounters an adventurous youngster. Crocodiles and occasionally leopard prey on the less cautious, especially when they swim in open water or cross deep hippo channels. A close relative of the Sitatunga, the bushbuck, is a denizen of the thickets and woodland. Here they are particularly fond of the termite hill tree islands. Although common in the park, they're not easily seen. The elephant, these gentle giants, roam all of Kasanka and surrounding areas. No one knows their movements and migrations here, but animals that frequent Levushi Manda and Lake Waka Waka almost certainly call the park home. Numbers are increasing, much to the disgust of the local cassava farmers, and sightings get more frequent. The oxbow lakes and pools along the floodplains begin to dry out as the time for the first rains approaches. It is at this time that the vast numbers of trap fish become a vast living larder for a host of water birds. Here gather marabou and woodstalks, the kingfishers and the herons.
bird life is rich, diverse, and abundant in all habitats. More than 400 species are known from the park, and it's expected that the list will continue to grow. Kasanka is predominantly flat, but there are a few areas of low, rocky outcrops. Several species of plant are restricted to these, and at the Mambalima waterfall occurs the only known colony of yellow-spotted hyrax, also called bush hyrax in the park. The only other species in the park is the tree hyrax that occurs in tree holes along several of the rivers. As with the larger and more visible mammals, here are also many small beasties that lurk in the forest and grass, and of course underground. Here one has the herbivores and the hunters, the Serengeti of the undergrowth. Tree mice with their long balancing tails rarely descend to the ground, feeding on a range of fruits, seeds and other plant parts. Several species of these tiny insectivores, the shrews, live in Kasanka. Most are associated with the swamps and dambo edges, but some live in the giant termite mounds, others amongst tree roots. The Nile crocodile is common throughout the park, and it is its major predator. Fish forms the major part of their diet, but larger mammals coming to drink are also at risk. They even wander onto the forest floor when the straw-coloured fruit bats are present. Once found throughout the area, large predators such as lion and the spotted hyena are now seen only as rare visitors. During the early 1960s, the activities of man-eating lions in the Serenji district prompted the colonial authorities to initiate a poisoning campaign in which a great many large carnivores died and populations have never recovered. The leopard is the only large predator that still survives in the park. The diversity of lizards and snakes in Kasanka is not particularly great and many of the species are seldom seen Of course, as with all things, there are exceptions. One cannot overlook the dramatic bobbing display of the male tree Agama to his paramour, or perhaps the Nile monitor lizard seeking out prey on the river banks. Where there is lots of water, there, you will usually find many frogs and toads. With the onset of the rains, the cacophony begins as males serenade their hopeful mates. There are those that remain well and truly on terra firma while others call from lofty perches. Apart from the brief silvery glimpses in the water and tell-tale surface ripples, the fish are seldom seen, but the waters of Kasanka are teeming with well over 100 species of fish, ranging from tiny minnows to giant vundu catfish, the fighting tigerfish, and climbing perch.
It is this abundance of fish that supports the large crocodile population and the many piscivorous birds, such as the kingfishers, herons and cormorants. Although many species of insect, spider, millipede and snail are visible throughout the year, the real numbers are to be seen during the rainy season. Dung beetles, of which there are many species, roll neat balls of mammal droppings, both as food stores in times of shortage, as well as brood chambers, where the larvae literally eat their way to freedom. Conflict over this dung resource may be vigorous and titanic. <laughs> Rain bugs feeding on the sap from a young tree absorb the nutrients but excrete the water in droplets, hence their name. A tree full of these bugs can produce a veritable rainstorm. Termites are amongst the most important grazers in Kasanka, their jaws working like scissors to cut grass and leaves into manageable sizes to be carried into the subterranean colonies. The heavy-headed soldiers ensure the safety of the numerous workers and harvesters. Kasanka has a well-developed road network, but many routes become waterlogged and impassable during the rains and may be closed for several months each year. Not all is perfect in the park, but major efforts by park staff have brought poaching for red meat and fish under control. The tourism infrastructure is well developed and maintained, but the park is still unspoilt when compared to many other wildlife destinations. Kasanka first a game reserve, then raised to national park status, was neglected for many of its years. But in 1986, a guardian angel arrived in the form of David Lloyd. I first came to Kasanka in 1985 with a friend of mine, Gary Williams, and we went fishing in the lower part of the park. We came into the park that way, and uh, I liked the look of it. And then I found out that, in fact, that it was a park that didn't have any tourism or any facilities, and that it was just being left on hold, as it were. And so I went to see the director, one Harry Chabuela, and asked him whether I could make a little expedition into the park and have a look at it with a view to developing it one day. And came here in about, no, first of all, in November '85 and uh, had a look-see. I didn't see any animals at all, apart from having heard a shot when I first entered the park. So then we walked up to Wasa here and uh, had a look around and saw a few animal tracks. And then I asked them how many animals there were here and what was here, and there was quite an impressively long list. And uh, so I went back to Lusaka and, and uh, spoke to the director again, and he gave me a permit to come here in 1986. Which I did, and arrived here in about May, made a little footbridge at Chantetti at the same game camp, and walked in with some chaps, leaving my vehicle there. And we started uh, building a little camp here at Wasa, which had been the camp of the ranger, uh, who used to be operating from Serenji in the 50s. And the, the animals were very, very jittery, and uh, they would run off the moment you saw them. And there were hunters' camps throughout the park, one just near the lake here, and long rows of uh, traps set neatly all around the park, and fish traps everywhere. And so the an the animals were heavily heavily poached, but they hadn't been exterminated. 
at that time I worked on an annual permit to, to enter the park and to carry out um, various structural improvements, mm. such as putting in roads and putting in a, a small lodge here. And then I took on a number of scouts and I used the National Parks and Wildlife Service here and also the Konona Anti-Poaching Unit. And after two years, the director said, well, it looks like things are going all right, so you better get a lease organized. And so we started working on that, and it took uh, two years to do, with the help of people like uh, my friend Ian Manning and Peter Moss. And in 1990, on the 17th of July, the lease was signed. The Kasanka Trust also operates the tented Shubul camp in the southeastern corner of the vast Bangwelu swamp. Much of the appeal of the location lies in its abundant and diverse bird life. But there are also more than 100,000 black lechwe, the only place they occur. Sesebi are numerous. With smaller numbers of plain zebra, elephant, hippopotamus and oribi. Another trust development, Lake Wakawaka. Waka, lies just to the east of Kasanka National Park. Although game is not abundant, nor is it particularly visible, this is a place with real atmosphere, and also the right place to contemplate what much of Africa once was.